Hey guys, it's Craig and uh, I'm going to do another vlog. This is number three on uh, metal detecting. And uh, when I was uh, in my 30s, well, I started about 1920, when I was about 25, uh, I started playing tennis and uh, I'd been a track star and I'd had broke bones in my foot and stuff. And I uh, I just couldn't do the training anymore. And then a couple years later, I was watching uh, some of the old tennis matches, and I thought, man, I'm so fast. I could beat, I could outrun most of those guys that are doing that tennis, you know. And so I was in college, and uh, I had to take a PE course, and uh, so I took tennis, and uh, I got within about three years. I started practicing on my own and I met a guy that was a professor and we started doing drills and eventually I got up to where I was a 5-5 five, five player, 5-0, five, 5-5 oh, five, five player, 7-0 oh is like a pro on the circuit. I had 120 mile an hour serve and I could run and I was quick on the court. I could, you know, crush the ball. And I didn't get tired. I could play, you know, three hour match in 100 degree heat. In fact, I used to wear my opponents down <laughs> on purpose <laughs> in the heat. But um, eventually I started getting all these injuries and I was getting burned out on tennis. And I uh, saw, you know, that when my friend got to uh, show me the gold coin, I, you know, started going out metal detecting and, um, he suggested that maybe I, you know, I could incorporate metal detectors into my, uh, into my, uh, metal, my, uh, tennis store. So I started doing that and I, um, got a, uh, I decided to go with the Soro cause I was using the Soro at the time. And, uh, so, uh, I talked to Jack Gifford and, uh, he was in Arizona. I talked to him many times over the years, and uh, so I ended up getting a uh, dealership. And so I started buying and selling and trading metal detectors, and I'd take all my profits. I had a metal detecting fund, and if I saw a detector I wanted, I'd just buy it from my detector fund. And uh, that went on for about maybe 10 years. and. Uh, I uh, decided that uh, later on I became, uh, I bought a Bliss Tool and uh, I've had a lot of detectors over the years and that was one of the best ones. I'd bought an XP Deus right before that and that was like a $1,700 machine and all these people were going, oh my God, you know, and I said, hey, I want the best machines, <laughs> you know. So, uh, I uh, decided to, you know, start, you know, going out metal detecting, you know, looking for older stuff. And uh, one day, uh, the guy that I rented my store from that I went to high school with uh, said that uh, he had a permission for me. And uh, it turned out to be on George Washington's estate, which was just down the Potomac about... I don't know, 15 miles from Alexandria. And uh, uh, this lady owned the property and there was a pool house and, uh, and a pool and it was right on the Potomac River. Uh, so we went down there and on the way down, I had the technetics and it broke. It smashed into the side of the uh, truck as it, we were going down. So I had a brand new bounty hunter that I was trying to sell. So we decided to use that. And uh, it was not much on the property at all, but um, I got a signal. And I, when I was looking at the meter, I was thinking, ah, oh, it's a bottle cap, you know, but then I thought, you know, I've dug bullets, you know, Civil War bullets that read like that. So anyway, uh, I dug down maybe two or three inches and I saw the back of this silver coin. I didn't recognize it. And uh, it said one dime on the back. 
And when I turned it over, it was a seat at Liberty dime and it was uh, 1854 and Scott and I were running around screaming, you know, we were going, oh my God, look at this coin, you know? And I think the oldest coin before that was, um, I think around 1915, maybe. I got a barber dime, but, uh, oh, actually it was uh, 18, probably 18, 51 to 53, I'd actually found a uh, three cent piece at Cameron Valley when they were bulldozing. But um, that was definitely, the seat at Liberty was definitely the best. And it changed everything. I I decided instead of going after quantities of modern silver coins, I was, you know, I was reading all these uh, treasure magazines and I saw people digging, you know, fantastic stuff in there. and. One guy was Ed Fedori, and he was up in New York, and he was digging reals, Spanish coins. And uh, I uh, I thought, man, that's crazy, you know. I'd love to dig one of those. And uh, probably a couple years later, I was hunting with another friend, and uh, we started going down to Stafford County. And... Uh, I'd heard about this. Well, we started going down there with groups of people. You know, we'd go out with like five or six guys and there was a fire department that would let us uh, park and then we could go behind it. And all. There was woods all over Stafford County. It was unbelievable house sites and 150,000 troops had camped in Stafford County after the uh, Battle of Fredericksburg, after they got their asses kicked. And... Uh, they were there the whole winter and uh there was just you know unbelievable the amount of stuff they left behind <laughs> so we used to kind of like explore the woods of just miles and miles and miles of woods and um i got lost several times really bad and uh <laughs> ended up uh bringing a compass with me and then always looking at the sun to make sure i didn't get lost but uh, the, uh, that coin, you know, I decided, you know, the heck with these modern, you know, silver coins and going, you know, um, I still did it, but I, you know, on the weekends, I decided I was just gonna go south and uh, we started going down to, you know, Stafford and uh, we were finding all kinds of stuff. And I heard a rumor about some kind of tavern that people had been hunting around and they found thousands of silver coins and really old ones. So I kind of knew the general area, but I'd never been there before. So me and this guy, Mike, <clears throat> walked down through there and um, he was kind of off to the right of me and I saw this square area and I started walking toward it. And it was completely flat on the side of this hill. And uh, he kind of went on down the hill. And so uh, I saw two dig holes and uh, I swept, I went over both the dig holes and there was nothing. And I went uh, between the two holes and I got a signal and it was loud and it was reading pretty high on the meter. And uh, I think it was reading like a silver quarter. And I dug down about two inches and I saw this, like a quarter, I thought at first it was a quarter of a dollar. And uh started wiping it off and I noticed it was a Spanish real. And uh, it was a quarter cut from an eight real. And it was almost in mint condition and there was no wear on it at all. And I was sitting there on my knees just looking at this coin. I couldn't keep... I just kept turning it over and over in my hand and I, I was just in shock. I thought, oh my God, I've actually found one of these, you know, and didn't know if I'd ever would. And uh, my friend came walking up about a minute or two later and he was going, what's wrong? What's going on? And I said, man, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> I showed it to him and, oh, he got so mad. And uh, <laughs> I said, you know, I said, I don't care if I find anything the rest of the day. This has made my month. 
made my year almost. <laughs> but uh, since then, uh, I've found uh, 22 cut coins and I found uh, 20 uh, regular silver, I mean, uh, regular uh, reals. And uh, I found them as big as uh, two reals. I've never found one bigger than a two real. I did find a four real that was cut in half. Um, I also found a real, uh, eight real that was uh, cut in half, and it was 1755. And I had a, we had a permit to water hunt, and uh, that was another one where the, we were hunting creeks and down there in uh, Botany Bay near uh, Stafford and uh, along the Potomac and stuff. And, uh, and there was some beaches down there where we found just modern silver coins, but then there was, uh, we went up uh, Potomac Creek and uh, I remember that one day I found, uh, I think two Indian heads and uh, uh, a spur that, as we were going along the side of these banks and there was some sand and I saw a snake <laughs> and it was it was on the uh in the sand and uh so I said hey I said that that snake is probably guarding something so I'm going to jump out and uh everybody thought I was crazy and uh so it was it was a giant black snake water snake I guess and uh so I started wading over there and the snake saw me and it took off into the water. And uh, so I went right up on the bank and I swept right next to where the, the uh, snake was and I dug a spur, <laughs> Union spur, perfect condition. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, these Spanish coins though, uh, when I first came into town here in Middletown, uh, there was a lot down the street and it just was calling to me. I've had this happen many times where for some reason a sight just calls to me. And so I actually, during one of the uh, yard sales, they have like these uh, mile long yard sales and stuff in this town and all kinds of parades and stuff. And I saw a guy over there was selling some stuff in the lot and I uh, went over and asked him if he owned the property or knew anybody that did, and he said he didn't. And uh, so there was a guy in the house next door, and he knew I metal detected. And one day, a uh, developer who had built a lot of houses over his career, uh, uh, I guess he was going. He was thinking about buying the property, and uh, he had a cheap metal detector and. He was trying to find the uh, sewer line that came into the property and to make sure that it was open. And uh, so this guy called me that was next door and I said, oh, come on down right now. I only live about two minutes from you. So I walked down there and introduced myself. And then I went out there and started scanning. I got, got you know, the, the, the uh, the pipe was really big, you know, even if it's deep, I could pick it up pretty well. And I had the blitz tool at the time. So I traced it all the way over. And um, so he started digging and he couldn't pinpoint it. And uh, so I actually had a pinpointer with me. And uh, once he got the hole open, I pinpointed the pipe. And then I actually took my shovel and scraped it all right, you know, all the dirt away. And, he goes, man, you're really good at that. And I said, well, I've been doing it for years. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, uh, he knocked a hole in it. And then the uh, it turned out that the uh, sewer was open. So he started reaching in his pocket and he said, uh, how much do I owe you? And I said, um, I really don't want any money, you know. And But, you know, if you could, I'd like to metal attack the property. So he goes, if I buy it, he goes, that's a done deal for you. So uh, a few days later, he called me and uh, told me that I could metal detect the property as long as I wanted. And I could bring, he wouldn't allow anybody else to do it, but if I wanted to bring somebody, I could. So uh, 
I was kind of disappointed at first because it wasn't a whole lot I was finding. And uh, I let a couple people hunt. One guy I had met in town and uh, he found a beautiful uh, Canadian half dollar silver right by the you know sidewalk. And uh, I'd found a couple Indian head pennies and a couple bullets and a lot of wheat pennies. There was just wheat pennies everywhere. And uh, over the next couple of months, uh, they, you know, I, I pretty much hunted most of the property and uh, he cut down a bunch of bull, uh, bushes next to this house and they ended up knocking the house down. But uh, uh, one day I was, I'd hunted for about four hours and just hadn't found hardly anything. And I decided to make one sweep because I noticed, I said, well, I forgot to hunt real close to the house where they took all those bushes out, got a signal. I thought, man, that sounds good. And I dug down about, I don't know, five or six inches. And I looked down and I saw this cut coin straight up and down in the side hole. And um, I said, oh my God, it looks like it might be Spanish silver. And so I pulled it out and it was a half of a two real. And uh, it was pretty worn, but uh, you could see where somebody had uh, started cutting the coin originally and then stopped and then cut it where it was more more even straight through the middle. It's like they cut it wrong, started cutting it wrong at first and then, you know, redid it. And then it was, it looks like the coin was hold and that the, uh, whatever they had it attached to broke through and, and you know, Maybe that's why they lost the coin because it, uh, you know, the, where the hole was, it, it, it had broken through on, you know, the edge. But um, later on, he was hunting, he was uh, digging a tree up and he got down about three and a half feet. And so I, after he left, I jumped down in there and the first thing I popped out was a big pewter, pewter spoon. And uh, there was a whole bunch of pieces of them and and I got uh, two coins. I got a King George III, 1785, and it had the High Bernia on the back, the Irish. Uh, it was like a tribute to the Irish. And then I dug a King George II that also was a High Bernia, no date, probably 1720s. And uh, I'd never dug a High Bernia, and I dug two back to back. So uh, you never know, you know, pays off to do a little extra work. I, I dug that whole pit out and uh, that was, you know, about all I found. But I, I think, you know, when they bulldoze that site again, it'd probably be stuff down deep, deep in that ground over there. But uh, all right, guys, give me some comments and uh, likes on my channel and also some subscribers. <laughs> so uh, tell me what you guys think. I'm going to be doing these probably three or four, maybe five vlogs a week, if I can. On uh, This is my main, this is the long form. I do cat videos and other videos on the shorts. I get so many more views. I, I don't get as many views on the, on the regular YouTube uh, thing, but uh, I've gotten over a million views in the last year on the shorts. All right, guys. Have a good day.